Hello, folks. Here we are. <laughs> it's the Pond Squad with Wendy Card, George Oliver, and yours truly, Kathy Morrison. Hey, y'all. Thank you for joining us for New Burn Now's podcast for July 30th, 2020. This is episode 150. We oh, are connecting yeah. you with our community by talking about the people and places in New Bern and beyond. And we want you to feel free to join in the conversation. You can let us know if you have any questions or announcements uh, by commenting on the Facebook live stream. I should be able to find it on newburnnow.com for Facebook. If you're hearing me say this, you probably already know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. And we and have a something going on. Yeah, we have a contest. So uh -huh. to be to be entered to win, make sure that you comment during today's show, not after and on New Burnow's Facebook page, because if you commented on a watch party or something, we may not be able to see uh, the comments. And at 1.50, we will announce the winner and the contest is over. Huh. If okay. you answer correctly, your name will be entered in a drawing to win a prize. Winners will, the winner will be announced at seven o'clock today. Now, okay. are you ready for the question? Is it a hard one? Not, well, I, I'm guessing you probably attended uh, something related to this. So I have a feeling Kathy knows and I'm, George, you know everything, so. Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't want us to answer it though, No, right? you can't answer okay. it. Okay. You'll, you'll answer later uh, when we queue gotcha. it up, so. Okay, what nautical relic is located at Lawson Creek Park? Uh, Sputnik. <laughs> close, <laughs> so close. <laughs> yeah, close. Um, now nautical nautical means of the sea, not of the air. So we don't want anybody to guess the Blue Angels plane. Right, is right, what, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't That's think right. that work. Although the Blue Angels is part of the Navy, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That could be a yeah. You never know. But that's not the um, answer. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right. So we want folks to answer that question. I didn't want to accidentally answer it right with a silly answer. <laughs> <laughs> Just so it's not spoiler alert. <laughs> there you go. So you got two things you can rule out. That's right. But if you do know, we want you to put it on the uh, on the Facebook page, right? Comment on the Facebook page. Yes. Okay. Yes. And All right. right now, I see Rob Jones. Hey, Rob Jones. <laughs> hey, Rob Jones. You got folks. Okay. Hey, good. Okay. So well, George has been out and busy lately. What have you been up to? Well, I um, took a vacation down to Tybee Island, Georgia with my father-in-law and two of my kids. And we went in an RV. And oh. I've never done that before, but I think I'm an RV guy. Um, I, could, I could basically stand up in it. Um, <laughs> like if I didn't stand up completely straight, but kind of like this. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I would occasionally bump my head on the lights. But other than that, I mean, you kind of get used to that. And um, it was great. It was a class C size, about 26 feet long. And uh, that was enough room for us. Everybody had a place to sleep and it was comfortable. And we were mostly outside anyway. You kind of just went inside when you went, went to bed and also to get cooled off because it was really hot in Georgia. I understand it was hot here also, mm -hmm. but the water was like 84 degrees down there. We went wow. swimming, which yeah. seems it was like a weird salty bath. Uh, it wasn't really all that refreshing, but um, we rented bikes, we went to the house, we went fishing, we uh, went into Savannah one day, and Catherine showed us some of her favorite spots because she's going to college down there, and uh, it's just a really, really nice time. Um, I think a lot of people are turning to RVs right now for traveling because um, you can cook yourself, and you can stay in the same place, and, and you can be around people if you want to, or you can stay by yourself if you want to. Uh, the campground down there we stayed at was really good. It's called River's End campground so if anybody is, is an rv person looking to go to the tybee island area check that place out really nice clean well-run spot Very sounds cool. like fun so yeah how were the bugs uh they weren't bad so there were there were i think flies come to campgrounds right mm -hmm. and so when we would eat outside and grill we got so that we would bait the flies like <laughs> like if we were having corn on the cob i would cut the kernels off one of them and then put it off the side and then most of the flies would go over there. And so that worked out <laughs> good. Um, and, you know, we swatted a lot of flies, but they weren't like, uh, 
like there weren't mosquitoes really, maybe a couple. So it wasn't bad. Uh, it was it was nice down there. Yeah, except was, for the was the beach crowded. Uh, the beach was not all that crowded. It was okay. So you can uh, do your six feet and all that. Oh yeah, no problem there at all. Um, cool. And there were it, the lighthouse. Uh, it's a really old lighthouse. It's a beautiful old lighthouse. We got to go to the time for that, but you have to get um, a re tickets in advance and do a reservation. So they limit the number of people and when they go. So that's all fine. But um, I think I think a lot of things these days, it's like you just need to plan ahead. Uh, and then you can do all the things you want to do, but you just need to make sure you don't wait the last second. Uh, Sounds like I a understand. neat family vacation. Yeah, yeah. I understand the RVs are kind of in high demand right now. So it's difficult to find them. Uh, if you're looking to buy one, same thing with boats. Um, I did talk to a, a client a few days ago that has a lot of rental properties down in Brunswick County. And they are busier than they've ever been because people still want to take a vacation, but they want to be more self-contained. Like mm -hmm. if you rent a house with your family as opposed to hotel rooms um, and they want to be more local or regional. So maybe a place you can drive to as opposed to fly to. And so those, it's interesting to see the trends, um, you know, economically, a lot of people are in trouble, but there are pockets of the economy that are doing really well right now. I understand real estate around here is doing pretty good too, because a lot of people want to move down this way from, more congested areas. So you think about that, if you know, think about selling your house, think about selling a boat, um, maybe it's a good time to, to do those things because uh, they're high demand right now. So did you rent one, an RV? No, my, my father-in-law and mother-in-law have one. They got one they, when they retired and they've gone all around the country in that thing um, for two months out of every winter, they go to Florida. They have a campground where they have a lot of really good friends now that go every, every year. So they do that, but then they've gone as far away as Alaska. Uh, they spent two months wow. in Alaska fishing for sockeye salmon. Oh my gosh, that's I awesome. know. Oh. I know. Wow. Brought, Life is simple, fish. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, they brought back like 160 pounds of fillets. They would catch oh them, gosh. clean them, vacuum seal them, and freeze them, and um, had a wonderful time. So they've just been all over. I, I, watching how much fun they've done and, and all the places they've seen makes me want to do that also. So I think it's a pretty neat way to travel. Very cool. Have y'all tried yeah. salmon on a cedar plank or uh, a mm -hmm. piece of, oh man, it's delicious. Yeah, that's really good. Really <laughs> good. And we brought our instruments and we played some music. Uh, Barry plays guitar and Kat brought her bass and I had banjo and we had, you know, um, really good time. The last night we stayed in Southport. I have a friend with a restaurant and a bar down there, open air bar. And we were allowed to, the bar's closed right now. We were allowed to pull the RV right up to the bar and get power. And then we were just looking out at the water and we were able to go out there and play music and have dinner. And just Southport, another really pretty spot. Kind of reminds me of Newburn or Beaufort a little bit. Yeah. Neat. Well, they were great pictures. I, I was very uh, jealous. Yeah. <laughs> he could have he could have asked us to join him. <laughs> not that big. I would I would have yeah, stayed in a in a tent. So you have to climb up on the top and ride on the top. And yeah. There you go. There you go. Right. Uh, what, well, that's cool. Gonna... Um, been working on a lot of the virtual stuff for the historical society. We we okay. just finished our first series of four um, virtual presentations uh, on Facebook with Susan Moffat Thomas did her uh, downtown New Bern Renaissance, which is really interesting you know consider what happened and and all the people that had to come together and all the pieces to come together mm -hmm. over the 40 years to make that transition of our downtown to what it is now uh was a great story but all four of those pieces jim hodges uh then and now uh the the great fire from carol beckton uh, about uh, uh shoot i forget that <laughs> that's what i did this last time John Lay's, John Lay's uh, um, Ghent neighborhood. Ghent, yes. Yeah. I don't know why there's a there's a block about that G word. Um, <laughs> but John Lay's did Ghent, and Susan Moffat Thomas did uh, did uh, the uh, downtown Newburn Renaissance. So all of those now are on our Facebook page on the, in the videos. So you can go watch them, even though you missed the live streaming. You can still go watch them, and they're also on our, um, our on our uh, uh, website. Website. Thank you. Yeah. Age, God. Anyway, <laughs> I'm with you, Kathy. I think it's the heat. <laughs> Must be. That's, that's a good excuse. You also got We're a lot also... of interest in your post about the Baxter clock. I saw that. That got a whole lot of interest, Claudia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Somebody came to Claudia and said, "Did you know about this?" And she did all that research, 
and posted it. And the neat part of it is the great great granddaughter of the um, ophthalmologist, optometrist, uh, contacted her. She had taken the picture and then Claudia posted the picture she took. But she's going to come down and talk to Claudia and show her some of her family collection, some of her family heirlooms. So it just, you know, it's a neat story and people really connected with it. They did just, you know, really responded to that. Very but cool. We're working we, on it. we need to have Claudia on. I really yes. miss her. So yeah, she's, she's, a, she's back in town now. Awesome. So we need to have her get her back here. Yeah. But we're working on another series. This will be a series of five, but there'll be shorter pieces. And it's going to be the Ordinary Women, Extraordinary Deeds series. And that will start up on August the 17th. So we're going to do that um, five days in a row with each of the five pieces. With Katie Brownell was a Civil War soldier. Yes, she's a woman in the Battle of New Bern. And then Sarah Dudley Petty uh, was the first uh, free woman born in her family. And she uh, grew up into a middle class Black uh, family, which there were a whole lot of them then until Jim Crow came around. And then we have, she's, um, uh, I'm going to have to look. <laughs> we have Charlotte, Charlotte Roan, who was a social activist, who was the first black nurse uh, in the state of North Carolina. And she'll be there. And then we have Bayard Wooten, the photographer that a lot of folks are familiar with. And then Dr. Lula Dissesway, who's really an interesting lady who was all around the world helping people and came back to New Bern and worked in the hospitals here for 20 or 30 years. So those are the five women that are gonna be in that Ordinary Women series. Very cool. And, now, were they the same ones when you did the presentation yes. last year or the year before? Yeah, they're the they, same they, five women. In fact, they're the same actors that we had. So we said, so, you know that, that you learned, learn it again. Right. <laughs> now, now the, you did many encore presentations for that, didn't you? You had a lot of, a I lot think we of. We ran that, and we did it at the library. We did it at uh, at uh, lunch and learn. So we've done it at least twice, and it sold out each time. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's a it's a freebie, and it will be in a series. And again, when the series is done, you still will have access to the videos. So okay. we're working on working in video stuff. And George, your mom can watch them. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> Call up your mom and say, click now, mom. <laughs> you don't have to worry about getting her tickets and them selling out That's too right. fast. <laughs> and selling out, right? Your yeah. problem is solved. There you go. <laughs> but we're, we're also working on some videos to, for Ghost Walk. We're preparing two pathways for Ghost Walk. Uh, and the video pathway we'll use for sure. And that's that's going to be neat. And that that they are filming on locations. And they've got a you know a slick professional fella doing it, so they're going to be neat videos. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also preparing a possible outside wander through the cemetery for Ghost Walk. So we're doing yeah, a lot. So of is, the, I, is the idea that Ghost Walk will not be a live event this year? We don't know, so we're preparing both ways. Okay, that's great. Um, we're preparing to have a, a live event outside uh, in the cemetery. Uh, saying, yes, wear masks, yes, stand away from each other. But if circumstances are such that we can't, we still will have the video productions. And we'll, yeah. we'll have those, even if we do have a live ghost walk, we'll also have access to the video production. So folks who don't want to come out um, and wander through the cemetery can still see all of those 13 stories of the ghost. So that is similar similar to what the theater is doing right now. So, um, you know, New Pacific Theater has been closed since, I don't know, February. Uh, I guess, March. Um, and the Sax Bradbury show is done by teenagers every year. Mm -hmm. And they've been working hard on their their show. And it's um, original works written by teenagers from around the country that they chose to do. Um, but they would have gone up two weeks ago. That's when their show would have been. Mm -hmm. And so um, what they're doing actually tonight and Saturday is they are filming the show. Um, and in hopes that in October they will be able to do a hybrid of live stage and filmed work mm -hmm. because some of the kids that are involved will be in college or will be back at school. A couple of them go to high school in different places mm -hmm. and won't be here in October. And so they're preserving the project while still, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can't have a live audience right now. And so who's the director for that, George? Um, I don't, I don't remember her name. Um, 
Yeah. You're in trouble my, tonight at the dinner table. <laughs> <laughs> it, is my, it is my middle child, Abigail. Uh, she is, she's directing that, and she's got a great team of kids. And gosh, they've worked so hard with all these different types of adversity they've had to deal with. Um, Bill Han, I mean, not Bill Han, sorry, Charlie Hall was there yesterday taking some photos. I think it's going to be a story about that because mm -hmm. really, you know, the show must go on and mm -hmm. art's got to keep going. And particularly when you've got the, the will to do it and the determination and the ability, you find ways to continue to express yourself. And so mm -hmm. that's really the story of this year for, for those kids yeah. is it, it's not easy anyway, but it's really hard when those kind of obstacles get in your way and you just figure out ways to, to still go forward. You want to keep everybody safe, but you still yeah. want to want to present the opportunities. Exactly. You're good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think we have we have a guest in the wings. Do we not? Oh, yes, okay. we do. Okay. Um, we have uh, Dr. Dawn Baldwin Gibson. Here she comes. All right. I think I see her coming. She's with Peloton Ministries. Okay. I'm, I'm trying almost. to get there. Sorry, Don. Almost there. <laughs> okay. I see a spot there for her. I know There's she Welcome. Look at Dr. that smiley Dr. face. <laughs> Tell it, Don Ministry. <laughs> Yay. You, you must have a lot of things going on. <sighs> yes. We have, um, today we are um, culminating the work that we've been doing with some Hurricane Florence survivors over the last nine months uh, around mental health and supporting resiliency in communities. And so they have been meeting with therapists and um, clinicians at once a month for the last nine months. And so uh, today we are doing hurricane relief bags. And so they are filled with all of the things that you need, like flashlight, first aid kit, hand sanitizer, mask, and food. So um, yeah, so they, they're doing that and they're doing about 200 uh, yeah. produce boxes for those families. So um, we have a lot that's happening today. And so uh, I just got back in. <laughs> so I was glad to make it in on time. So. Oh, we well, appreciate your time. I mean, <laughs> you're doing everything. You COVID testing, like all kinds, the school, the just yeah. all kind, every, yeah. School is right around the corner. We're um, literally two weeks. Next week is professional development for our staff and then next the following week, we're back to school and we're really excited. I mean, we've planned a lot for our scholars because um, in this COVID-19 world, we realize that um, the world is vastly different than what it was just six months ago, um, but they still need to learn. They still need to grow. They still need to thrive. So we have a lot that's planned for them. We have these huge boxes. They're like that big. They're these loads of moving boxes and they have, they're moving to the next grade, right? So they're getting them with their Chromebooks and all their books and all their school supplies and snacks and goodies. And so we're really, um, we're going to do all that we can to provide a really great experience in the midst of COVID-19. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, the how, folks, I'm sure, will be happy to have all of those get ready for storm things as we're getting ready for Isaias coming up. Yeah, so that was, talk about the timing. But one Perfect. of the things that we, we recognized is that, um, and I'll run over and get one of the bags because they're so cool. They, they say, are you prepared? And so um, we just want to make sure that people understand that. Um, and so I'm going to put my NC Boad hat on for a moment. Um, and so we need people to understand they have to, they really need to have a plan because the way that we've done disasters in the past is nothing like what we'll see. Um, shelters will look different and really like um, Director Sprayberry said, um, the Director of Emergency Management for the state has said, that really should be your last resort. That should be the last place. So start thinking now and think about, you know, if your electricity goes out, you need to have a couple of weeks of knowing that um, the way linesmen have come in before might not happen in this disaster that way. So we need to be prepared and we need to have shelf um, stable food so that medications, all of those things, we need to be prepared. And so it may be a lot longer than what it's normally been, um, but preparation is gonna be key. Mm -hmm. Make sure there's something in there to talk about um, checking your insurance policy. 
whether it's a renter's policy or your homeowners, a flood rather flood and make sure you got contents because so many people, you know, you don't find out until too late. And a lot of people got yep. stuck with that in Florence. Yeah. You're exactly right. And so the CCDRA, which is the Craven County Disaster Recovery Alliance, um, yeah. put together a great, <laughs> I, thought, I kept working through those letters, um, but um, they put together a great packet for our survivors. And so all of that information, and it's in a nice um, packet for them that's, you know, weatherproof, but that you're exactly right. People have to understand that, um, we cannot not be prepared. It is right. just going to be. Yeah. It's something as simple as a checklist. This is what you need. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so let me, let me, if you give me one quick second, it's sure. like literally on the other side. Yeah, so <laughs> grab that so we can see the bags. And if you don't know, Dawn also runs the Eastern North Carolina Disaster Re Resources Facebook page. And it's, she's, you, I don't know where you get like the time and energy to, to do all the moving parts that you're you're working on, Dawn. I mean, it's just amazing. Well, so. we have a great team. Like, um, I'm always amazed how God takes just a few people and they're committed and they work really hard. Um, and so many of them like work two and three other jobs, but they were out there this morning and making sure that the bags, and this, this is what I love about these bags, Wendy, look at this. So it says, are you prepared? I love it. But yes. on the back, it has the checklist. Wow. That's, that's, that's awesome. That's, yeah, it is perfect. <laughs> so you just pick the bag up and you say, okay, do I have my can opener? Do I have my pill? You know, so it's really great. So, um, yeah, so those were going out today. Woo. Um, uh, yeah. Well, for, pretty, I mean, pretty think snazzy. of all the folks that you're helping with that. That's great. Yes. You. Yeah, you've helped thousands and thousands <laughs> of, of residents. I mean, with every, with all, all different facets of life. So, um, you and, well, and Pelta ministry and your husband, Dr. Anthony and, 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 and all the volunteers. And so thank you so well, much for home. everything you do. So, you, can't, you know, I grew up here, you know, Newburn is home for me, but my, my ancestors were here in this area. Actually, um, one of my ancestors is recorded being here as a free man in 1750. Wow. And so I know, right. So he had a deed of property. So that's how we were able to track that he was here. But my great grandmother was actually, when you were talking about Miss Charlotte Rome, some of those, um, my um, great grandmother was actually one of the founding choir members at St. Peter's and Mizan Church. Wow. And she is in the Freeman Bureau. Um, and it was so funny because it was only men that would um, put money in the, the accounts. Mm -hmm. And so she was actually, they had to cross out like the, the all the husband words and all of the male <laughs> dominant words um, to put hers in. But she was actually selling um, fabrics on South Front Street. Wow. Um, and so, and, and so it's home, you know, this is home for me. And so, you know, that's what you do is you give back and you do what um, you're supposed to. I tell our scholars all the time, as a citizen, you have roles and you have responsibilities. And so this is a responsibility that we have to care for one another. Yes, so that's so very true. And who's I gonna ask you, darn it. It just went out of my head. Oh, if people want to, you know, help you, you know, with with anything from bags to whatever your your needs are, um, not your needs, but the community needs are, how do they help? I mean, oh, how that's an awesome question. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so right now we are working really hard um, to make sure that our scholars, we have 30 scholars, um, we have a trauma-informed school, and so what does that mean? It means that it is not just a school where we say, what's wrong with you? You know, why are you doing that? Why are you acting that way? Um, it's that what has happened to you, and so we have children, obviously, that have been impacted by Hurricane Florence. We had several that lost everything they had, and then we had others that were literally rescued out of the water. So trauma is something that we 
live with and we deal with. And so they're varying levels, but they can impact a child's behavior and how they see the world. And so um, we are always, um, I'm a big proponent for reading. And so we are always, you know, we have an Amazon wish list. So, um, certainly people can look on our webpage or our Facebook page um, for Peloton Ministries um, to see that work um, that's going on. And right now we're working on getting snacks for our kids because um, we realize they won't be in school. They're used to, you know, their breakfast, their snacks. That's something that our church provides for, for our scholars. So certainly um, there's there are many ways that they go on Cash App. They can give to um, money symbol Pelotah, P-E-L-E-T-A-H, or they can go on PayPal, but they can look up all that information on our webpage at pelotonministries.com. Awesome. All well, right. Thank you so much for being Yay. here. Anything that we haven't hit that you need to talk about? Oh, I'm just so excited. We have books that have been coming out. Hold on, let me just do right up. <laughs> yes, indeed. So these are some of our new books. Look at there. Got our oh, president. Okay our presidential election wow, so we are getting cool. ready I, I um i love that we have been able we're going to get every one of our scholars one of those books so they will be up to date on what's going on in our elections and so it's just really about learning and growing even in difficult times that's what the real test of character is all about mm -hmm. right well we sure appreciate your being mm -hmm. here and all the work that you do in the community and thank, thank you. you so much for dropping by and Tell Wendy again, you want to come back again. Oh, sure. Oh, she, you, you can come back anytime. But <laughs> Don, Dr. Dawn, thank you Dawn. for taking the time to inform us and, and for everything that you do. And it's great seeing you. So thank you so much. Y'all have a great day. All right. Woohoo. Right, there we go. <laughs> Dr. Don Baldwin Gibson, and she's with Peloton Ministries and a lot of other stuff too. Yeah. And we also have. Rashima Walker in the okay. waiting room. So All right. Rashima Walker is with NC Works, North Carolina Works. And a lot of people are worried about working at the moment. So we'll see what she has to say. Let's see. So, and she was with the, the veterans. Um, oh my gosh. I can't remember the, well, we're going to have to ask her. But there's a, uh, She's a former woman Marine. And where are you at, Rashida? I'm right here. Can you hear me? There. Yes. I got. I, okay. I I'm got trying to. Okay. Business. There I am. Hey, hey everybody. Hey. All right. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Rashima Walker from NC Works. Yes, ma'am. How y'all doing today? Good. You look great. Yes. Oh. <laughs> great to see your smiling face. Oh, hey, Marines in the house. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> you got that right. And, yes. and just real quick, before you went to NC Works, you were with the veterans. I can't remember. Yes, I was a DVOC disabled veteran outreach specialist with here with NC Works. I, in fact, I retired out of Marine Corps back in uh, January 2012, and I was unemployed for a year, couldn't find a job here in good old New Bern. Um, and I remember I talked to the vet rep here at the Career Center, Mr. Richard Hansen, he retired Captain Marine Corps. And uh, he said, you need to apply for the, uh, the at that time it was the Elver position. And I applied and got it. And then they made me a DVOP. So I, I got to work with uh, disabled veterans, homeless. I got to know all the different resources we have here in Craven, Jones, and Pamico County. And then uh, in December of last year, I was promoted to the manager of the NC work. So not only do I work with veterans, I work with the entire community. Even those folks that are leaving like Don, uh, Dr. Don's group that's going to be going to work. That's what we're here for. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. You must have a whole lot of programs working at the moment. Oh, we have a lot. Even though we are closed to the public because of COVID-19, we have not slowed down. Um, we have one thing I can say about New Bern, we know how to adapt and overcome. So we have so many different type of jobs, opportunities going on with the manufacturing. We've got, in fact, I just got three from Bender Signs who are looking for construction workers. We've got administrative jobs. We've got those who, if you find yourself unemployed because of COVID-19 and you're not able to go back to work for the hospitality, we've got training programs that can retrain you um, so you can do something. So again, there are so many different opportunities that are here that we have available. My staff are working remotely, but I'm here, as you can tell, in the office. That's what Marines do. 
<laughs> um, and I just got a great staff. And again, that's, that's one thing I do love about New Bern. In fact, we had a partnership meeting this morning. And because uh, we, we still try to connect with our partners, even though we can't meet in person. Um, and just everybody coming together, to see how they can help somebody. It's not about who gets the credit, who's in the Sun Journal on the front page. It is not about that. If you can make a difference in somebody's life, and I know not everybody's going to go back to work, and that's okay. But if there's something that we can assist you in, that's what we're here for. Um, so I'm so glad that I know all the different partners, whether our businesses, whether our nonprofits. Um, if somebody comes in and they're talking about work and at the same time they don't got no food in their refrigerator, my focus is going to be focused on the food because they can't focus on no job if, they got, if they're hungry and their kids are hungry. So we kind of, oh, that's the kind of approach that we do here. Uh, it's not just about the employment. It's not about a number. I don't get paid by the number. I, I get paid to make sure if we're making a quality difference in folks' lives. So I'm just glad to be part of the community. How do folks reach you when they need help? Oh, you, well, we're on, I think I'm on every social media platform. I'm on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. That's one thing I did in December because a lot of our younger folks love social media. Uh, I've learned uh, watching Wendy and the rest of the crew who do it, you know, they do it full time. I, I'm just, a, I'm just a little amateur compared to them. No, um, no. <laughs> you rock. But, no, no, ma'am. I'm, and you know, she's Navy, but she's a corpsman. So corpsmen are different. Those Marines are best friend. You know that. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> yes, but if y'all need to reach us, you can reach us by our main office. Our number is 252-514-4828. Um, we do uh, Facebook. Um, you'll see all the different programs we have out there. We are reaching out to our schools, even Craven County Schools. We got a great partnership with the Volt Center. In fact, they're doing a two-day fast track for manufacturing because we've got so many manufacturing employers here in New Bern who need people now. So they will take them wow. in a two-day fast track. And guess what? They're not going to be going through a uh, – they're going to go automatically to permanent. So that means they're going to have a full-time job with benefits. Um, and that's what we're looking for. So we're not just trying to get somebody a job so they can be unemployed in three months. No, we're trying to get a career. I, I'm hmm? looking on your website. You've got a great website. And um, <laughs> it says there were 266 new jobs posted just today. Yes, sir. In fact, I'm about to put out my my update. I just put the one about the Bender signs talking to yes. Shane because he really needs folks. They've got a lot of orders um, for signs. So business is, is doing good. And even though it's COVID-19, we're aware of what's going on, but our businesses have done so much in preparing and taking care of their employees. Um, there is, it is safe and we cannot work, we cannot live in fear. We're gonna have to step up, roll up our sleeve and say, you know what, let me go out and do what I gotta do. We do that with our volunteers, the nonprofits with Dr. Don and her group. Uh, we have not slowed down. And that's one thing about New Bern. I'm glad you do this kind of podcast because you're letting people know we are still, we are still in the fight. We're, we're not backing down that one bit. We, we came over Hurricane Florence. We're going to get over Combat 19 and wherever it comes our way, we're going to be ready for it. That's how we do it. Ah, <laughs> I know that um, I know that the, the increased uh, federal unemployment ran out this week, right? They may, may come back, but right. have you seen people that are, are, are contacting you trying to get something now that that's run out? Well, we have, it's kind of like an ebb and flow uh, in a couple, like, like last, uh, the last three weeks, we've had nonstop phone calls about Good. jobs. Okay. Now this week, I think there's a lot of uncertainty, but we have, our phones are still ringing off the hook. We still get in emails. Um, some people, I mean, we provide resume counseling. We do, uh, some people don't know how to do a video when they do like a, a veteran, a uh, a viral little, you know, in interview type thing. So we do that phone interviews. We try to help folks how to use go to meetings on their phone because you're not going to go and sit down in front of the HR with a panel interview. They're not going to do that. Yeah. So we're right. learning a new technology. And that's one thing that we are, we are a beacon of hope. So you might be fearful because, you know, we've got some folks got to go back to work because they're raising their grandkids and they don't know nothing about Facebook and, and do an online application. I like to go back and just talk to somebody and get a job. But mm -hmm. I tell them one thing we know, and we're going to just say for the citizens of Newburn, we adapt. So guess what? That's why we're here with you. We're going to be in the firefight with you to get you over that hump. So you can go on and do great things and hopefully you'll reach back and grab somebody else. So yeah, there's no, there's no obstacles when it comes to employment or again, whatever folks got a problem with, that's what we're here for. So we're, we're also a beacon of hope because we've had people who lost their jobs, especially with COVID-19 and um, just dealing with the phone calls with people trying to file for unemployment. And I had people crying and just listening and they just want to talk to somebody. And even though I couldn't assist them, 
just being a listening ear, it, it just, because that could be me on that phone. And I always remind mm -hmm. my staff, it might be you coming through that door needing help. And we never forget what that feels like. And uh, so again, we're going to be here to help them brush off and, and get back to doing what they do, take care of their family and be productive citizens here. Mm -hmm. And it looks like there's 93 offices like yours in the state. So yes, most sir. county. Okay. Are yes, you sir. only Craven County? I cover Craven, Jones, and Pamico. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what, a, what a great service. Um, we really appreciate you doing that. My gosh. And especially now, uh, yes. people jobs more. I mean, I, I'm also on your website. We got a 7.9 <laughs> unemployment rate um, and record number of people out of work. So yes. they're going to, your phone's going to keep ringing. That's and fine. I'm, and we got programs. <laughs> so, and we got programs that were paid for their training. So they don't even yeah. have to spend any money and go into their budget. So, I mean, there's so, and there's a lot of remote jobs. So we got families who find their kids like when we work in um, from, from the house, we got remote jobs. They can sit there while their kid is doing online training and still uh, and still have an income. So there's something for everybody. That's I don't think awesome. enough people know. Got to get that word out. Yes, sir. And thank you for letting me be on here so I can pass the word. Yeah, and I have one more question. I know it's not NC Works, but since okay. um, I saw your post about Tony Wanda. Yes, so my Air Force it? veteran. <laughs> there you go. Do you want to fill people in as far as? Um, okay. Um, remember, like I said, I was the DVOP. And when I got promoted, Tony Wanda Jackson took my spot. So he's a disabled veteran outreach program specialist. He is a retired Air Force. And in fact, I've got his work cell here, which is 919. 971-9616. If you are homeless, if you are a veteran, if you're about to transition out the military and you plan on, even if you're not staying in this area, but you plan on staying in the state of North Carolina, Tony Wanda can contact you, can get, re connect you to resources in whatever county you're looking for. So if you're trying to go to Wilmington or Raleigh or the other part of the state, that's what we're here for. Um, and Tony Wanda will be glad to talk to you. He's got his phone with him all the time. Um, even if you it may not be about about employment, but you're having issues with the VA or you're trying to figure out how to work it because you're running out of your meds or you're dealing with some PTSD. You just relocated North Carolina and don't know where the nearest VA is. Guess what? That's what we're here for. And also, then you can contact me and my number is 919-410-5099 because I also a part of the Veterans Council and all the other veteran stuff. So that's near and dear to my heart. And if you if you're a veteran or you're about to get out or if you're a family member and you're dealing with a veteran just having this issue, especially with COVID-19, a lot of PTSD, a lot of things going on, we would be glad to connect you with the professionals. We'll be glad to, to help you whatever way that we can. Thank All you, right. Wendy. You're awesome. Thank you. No, so, you thank, are. Thank, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for letting me be on today. Yeah. Well, you have, you have to come back and, and keep us updated. Oh, so. yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I, I appreciate y'all letting me be here today. Well, mm -hmm. we appreciate you. So thank, <laughs> thanks, Rashima. Have a great day. No problem. Y'all really take soon. care. Stay safe, Bye -bye. okay? Okay, you, you too. too. All, All right. right. Woo-hoo. Bye. Bye. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> See you later. Bye. All right. Okay. Everybody will be taken care of. My God. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. She's That's great. Important. She is a <laughs> ball of fire, I tell you. I mean, yeah. she can get, she gets things done. I mean, all we, right. It sure probably, sounds like. It. Yeah. I've we, never even heard of that program. I didn't even well, know it existed. Now you need to tell uh, 10 friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a big deal. So it's, it is a big deal. Yeah. And it? if you need, you know, if you need, um, say somebody you need her hiring, you just contact Rashina and hopefully she'll connect you with somebody mm -hmm. looking for a job. So, so it's yeah. NC works. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. I think, All right. is it ncworks.org? Are you still looking at the website, George? Have you got them? George? Uh, yeah. uh, let me see. It's ncworks.gov. Um, .gov. Dot gov. There okay. we go. Yeah. Okay. All right. All Tap right. into all that energy and all those programs. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I mean, they've got different tabs for if you're seeking a job or if you're your employer trying to find somebody uh, and then list all the resources. It's a very good website. Okay. Good. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. Is our green lot. room empty or how are we? Yeah, we're, we're our green room is empty. empty. For... All right. Well, then let's go. How is How are we doing on the contest? Are people answering your question? Oh, let's let's give the contest question again. Okay, okay. Let's look at a real quick social media minute. I I'm bring I got glasses, so <laughs> now people can realize that I can read. I just can't see. So, Rob Jones says hi. 
thanks for watching James Atkinson and Rashima. Uh, that's what I have on my end. And the contest, so the contest is the question, what nautical relic is located at Lawson Creek Park? So put that into the Facebook comment and you'll be entered to win um, a, a prize. Everyone loves prizes. And we'll see who's paying attention because the answer, of course, is the Titanic. Um, <laughs> it was uh, it sunk there, there long after it hit the iceberg. It kept going for a bit and ended up in the and news. Lo long, long after. Yeah. Long <laughs> after. What was the girl who was out on the bow? Is she still here? Uh, yeah, she she's still there looking for that diamond. Looking for that. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, we've got some stuff we can tell you about. We've got yeah. uh, from August 1 to, from 1 to 4 p.m. in August 1, the New Bern Omega Center at 800 Cedar Street is going to have a black market event. And it showcases black owned businesses, services and products to the entire community of New Bern and the surrounding area. And they value the health and wellness of folks. So they're going to have various COVID precautions in place. I'll have free masks if you don't have a mask. Uh, they're going to take your temperature at the door. Uh, they'll check the capacity of the number of people in there. They'll have san hand sanitizer and six foot distancing. So, you know, go on and check it out. Find out what's in the black market and, uh, and they'll tell you about it and keep you safe at the same time. Yes. And uh, Deborah is, is waiting, but she needs the Zoom link. I thought I emailed it to her. So this is the second week in a row I screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, send her the Zoom link and we'll see what else we've got here. Okay. All right, Deborah, check your email. I'm sending it now. Oh. All right. Well, Wendy does that. We'll say uh, Poetry Open Mic is coming up August 4th from 7 to 8.30 with the featured poet, uh, Malaika King Albrecht. And after the featured poet reads, then they'll invite others to read who've signed up uh, to read one original poem. And you can sign up via email or you can do it on the evening of the event. Their email is nexus at nexuspoets.com. So that's August the 4th. On that note, I understand Rich Sheridan will be there working on some of his most recent rhyming stylings. Okay. Um, Does he do a, haikus or what? Oh, no. He, it's mostly um, mostly limericks. Limericks. There was a young lady. Yeah. They're all about local discovery map areas. Oh, so cool. tune in for Rich Sheridan's um, limerick slam. Discovery on, map limericks. Yes. Good. Rich needs to come back. <laughs> come on back, Rich. Don't, watch this and he's gonna want Don't to be back. scared. He's going to need to come back and defend himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With a limerick. Right. In, there once in, was a man from Newburn. <laughs> <laughs> Fill in your own leg. Yeah. Okay. Do we have Deborah? Uh, let's see. I'm making sure. No. Deborah just. Just to let you know, I emailed the link to your okay. um, email. Yeah. Uh, boy. What else do we have on uh, our list? In here. <laughs> um, there's, we have some information about the Craven Arts Council and oh. Gallery, the Bank of the Arts. Uh, there's a new interim director. Um, and if you go and meet the new interim director, you will recognize his face. It's Jonathan Berger, who has been with the Craven Arts Council for a while now. And they also have a new office manager, Marin Gwen Naren. And the council is working on creation of a community sculpture entitled Unity. It's going to be a 12 foot tall piece that'll be covered by area kids with paper mache to create a pair of clasping hands, symbolizing the strength and promise of our city when our citizens work together. So if you'd like your kids to be involved in this project, uh, there's gonna be um, an ability to sign up for that. There's gonna be two hour shifts from 10 to 12 and one to three on August 4th, 6th, 8th, 11th and 13th. If you go to their website at cravenarts.org, you'll get more information. They're going to have materials and lunch provided, and they're also going to have some local storytellers that are going to be entertaining. So um, really cool family event if you're interested in um, helping to express yourself here in a, in a sculpture that would be uh, representative of the town. So go to cravenarts.org and talk to Jonathan or Marin, and they can tell you all about it. That sounds neat. Yeah. yeah. And the Coastal Women's Shelter is having a back to school supply drive. Even if we're not going to be in a classroom, you still need supplies. So uh, for a list of needed items and all the details,
girls, uh, give them a call at 638-4509. That's the Coastal Women's Show. All okay. right. Yes. I'm okay. trying to text the link here. So give me okay. a second. All right. So our trivia question is, what's the nautical thing at, at Lawson Creek Park, right? It's probably a crab trap of some kind. There are crab lots pot. of. I bet it's a crab pot. I'll give you a hint. It's a lot bigger than that. It's taller than you, George. Bigger than bread big. basket. Wow. Uh, yeah, bigger. <laughs> so we played a lot of twenty questions on our RV trip, and it's so funny because you never hear about bread baskets except in that game. Is it larger <laughs> than a bread basket? Is always yeah. the first question I always ask. <laughs> and the first time Mason said, "What's a bread basket?" What the, yeah, said, I'm sure the kids said what. Yeah, I didn't know either. I said, just, is it bigger than a loaf of bread? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay yes. let's see. Uh, and it's not edible. What's that? It's not edible and it's larger than a loaf of bread. Yes, and definitely. So yeah. It's, it's got to be. Hmm. No, you can't guess yet. We'll give it's a very large treasure chest. Ah, give people... wonder what's in it. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Colleen. Hi, Colleen. Oh, Colleen's saying, what are you guys doing? Huh? She's watching. She's, work. She's too busy. For... All right, so say the name of the hurricane again. Um, let's, Isaias. Let's... Say again? Isaias. 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 It's Isaias in Spanish. It's Isaiah in Spanish? Isaias in Spanish. Isaias. Isaias. Every time I hear it, I think of that old song Zacchaeus that one <laughs> did, um, about the wee little man and the wee little man was here. So Isaías, uh -huh. Isaías. That was my first Spanish teacher. Okay. Isaías Paz. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Isaías. Isaías. Yeah, yeah. So Isaías may visit us. It, we're expecting rain, right? We're expecting much more than rain. I don't. Uh, know I don't know. Not yet. Yeah, we'll mm. see. So cross your fingers to yeah. go away, Eastside. Yes. Yeah. They're showing us the, the cone, the funnel, you know, the cone of, of silence. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're, you know, we don't know quite where we are in the cone yet. I think but other people would call it the cone of something blank. <laughs> the cone of shame, yeah. <laughs> you want yeah. the featured artist? Sure. Okay. This is at least 200 people dip their fingers in paint and then this is this is supposed to be to the earth. So on Earth Day, we had participants put their print, their fingerprints. So that's kind of cool. So it, it Laura estimated about 280 people. So wow. Yeah. I wish, the feature, I, I wish they that's that's not the featured artist, but that's the paint on the walls or the wall hanging there. Okay. And then next to it is Lisa Bisbee Lentz gave her a photo and she painted this in oil painting. Is that oh, not cool? That's neat. Yeah. Yeah. So neat. Now is that you sitting in the camp chair? Yes, it is. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And then yeah. this is the featured artist. Who did this? This is the um, 300, 300th anniversary bear. And it has a little commemoration commemoration coin. Uh, ben Watford. No, guess again. I know because you told me. Uh, Rich Sheridan. It, no, he's a he, poet. He's related to the person who did this. Oh, it's um, Mr. Bisbee. Jim Bisbee. Jim yes, Bisbee. Jim Bisbee. It, he's one of another one of my favorite artists in town. There's so many. It's it's hard to keep track of, you know. Mm -hmm. So all right. Okay. Uh, the link's not working for Deborah, but um yeah. Okay. Deborah, we, we miss you, but we'll get you on next week. So I don't know what the deal is. I'm having some uh, email issues today, so I don't we'll We'll figure that out. Um, Do you know something we can help Deborah promote today, Wendy? What's that? Is there something we could help Deborah promote today, even though she can't join us? Is there something we could? Yes, the Entrepreneur Series. Right. Uh, the Fall Entrepreneur Series is coming up. So check out Craven CC 
.edu slash SBC for Small Business Center. And look at all the classes that they're offering. Um, yeah, she's, it, when I talked to her a couple of weeks ago, she said she was really surprised by all the new entrepreneurs, the people, you know, starting new businesses during COVID. So it, that's, that's great. It's, it's wonderful to see people, you know, looking at different ways to, um, to adjust to all that's going on. And uh, what else? Um, oh, guess what? What? I got a new vehicle. It's not new. new it's a new vehicle for me. Not Are it's not new. new. No, I was looking for a Jeep, but Peggy Walker Barnes. I love her. She's a life um, coach and organizer. Mm -hmm. And one of her client her clients um, were selling a Honda CRV, a 2006. And I asked a couple of weeks ago. I said, "Is it four wheel drive?" And uh, she, she didn't think so. So after going to all the dealerships and searching for a used car, I finally said, you know, I'm calling Peggy. I'm like, I got to see this Honda. So <laughs> I went over. It's, it's, it's a really, I mean, it's a roomy SUV. It has a cassette player and a CD player. It, it was built in Britain. So I didn't know that about Honda. I, did, I didn't realize that. So, so the, the Steering wheels on the other side? No, it's not. But it was <laughs> built in Britain, so yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited. I got a great deal. So she is the great connector. And and uh, now does Finn I, like it? Finn has not been in it yet. I I haven't. I was going to register it today, but I'll do it tomorrow. So he's not allowed in unless it's registered <laughs> until I'm it's really it. yours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I paid for it, but I just haven't got to the DMV with all the paperwork. So okay. and. If you're thinking about, like, I was thinking about, you know, buying a used vehicle from a private seller, and I was kind of, you know, I really wanted, I knew, I ended up knowing her clients, um, so that was a, another great, you know, part of this, but I thought it was really tough to sell cars as far as all the paperwork and all that, and it really, it, it's not, so I'm going to put a little SOP, the standard operating procedure on how to buy and sell your vehicle. So after all, this is all said and done, but I talk about relieved. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, that day I has been the happiest day of my life and I can't remember when. So I, it's just a relief. And, what have you uh, done with your old truck? I'm selling it to my neighbor. Okay. <laughs> That's the blue one, right? And I always see. Yeah, blue. yeah. Uh, this going to, rrr, rrr, rrr. yeah, you <laughs> can't get it over 45 without, I mean, I can't get, I, I go on the highway and I have my flashers on just for short distances and irritate the heck out of people. But uh, what else? And so now you're a lot safer. Yeah. Yes. I, I love it. And the whole goal was like, I could put putts around my truck, um, you know, for, Hopefully it will last a little, you know, a little while longer, but my neighbors, uh, he likes working on cars. So, but I, the goal was like, if some a storm is coming and I need to evacuate, we'd be kind of, you know, mm -hmm. out of luck. So All right. anyway, so I, that's a good thing. And Laura, I just remembered Laura it's has Laura a joke. I... So oh. let me go get her. I'll be right back. All right. <laughs> And then it's time to answer the trivia question. And the trivia question was, George, do you remember? Yes. Um, what nautical object is in Lawson Creek Park or buried in? What was the answer? It's uh, in Lawson Creek Park. In Lawson Creek Park. I think it's displayed uh, in Lawson Creek Park. Oh, I was thinking it was in the lake. No, I think I think it's displayed in. That's what she's thinking. Okay. Gotcha. No. Do you have any guesses? Uh, Hola. I don't know. I'm talking to my phone. Okay. Hey, Laura. You got a joke. It's my joke. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. Why aren't koalas actual bears? Because they're covered um, with fur? No. Mm. I don't know. Because they, they got... 
they got bamboozled. Right. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> All right. They don't meet the qualifications. Oh. <laughs> hey, you <gotta> be quiet. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Who's responsible for quality control on this thing? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, Wendy? Kathy, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Laura, Mark. you got to try to answer the trivia question. Yeah, it's time uh, to answer the trivia question. Yeah, what nautical object is at the bottom of Lawson Creek Park in the water? At the bottom? I think so. Uh, I would say nautical. Uh, a compass? Don't, a compass? No, you can't no. guess. Oh. <laughs> They it's larger than, a, larger than a bread box. It's larger than a bread box. It's larger than a George, apparently. So a really big compass. That's pretty but, big. Yeah, pretty well, big. they'd have big compasses back in the day, maybe. Yeah. Wendy right. says I can't guess. Oh. Okay. Given, no, it's time to give, tell Wendy it's time to give the answer. It's time to give the answer, Wendy. George, I'm, I enjoy every morning your banjo, uh, banjo, alarm for me thank you i appreciate it <laughs> all right, bye -bye. here's wendy okay all right that's a big piece <laughs> i swear i haven't been drinking <laughs> <laughs> haven't you good uh, time yeah. yeah all right okay who's gonna guess all right come on folks okay well, the so we, we have a question about the question is it in the water, like at the bottom of the water, or is it on display it, or on land? I'm pretty sure at one point it was in the water. Oh, oh so it's, well, then it's not what I was thinking of. I was thinking of something that's on the land. Well, it's on the land right now, but at one point in history, it may have been partially in the okay. water. Then it's what so I, it's like a jump or um, the Lawson well, that, Creek monster, like the. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking uh, instead of instead of Nessie, it's Nusi, right? Nussie. Like uh, Nusi, there you go. Well, it's, it, you know, it has like, if it's what I'm thinking of, it has cog teeth, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It has cog teeth. Yeah. What kind of cog teeth? Cog, like cog teeth, teeth on a cog, instead of teeth on the monster, teeth on a cog. Oh, so some sort of wheel, some or sort. gear. Some sort of gear. Mm -hmm. You're getting close. Was it okay. A okay. The question to the people, just real quick. You got five, 10 seconds to answer. Um, <laughs> what is the question? Where is it? What is the nautical thing? What nautical relic is located in uh, Creek Park? I see an answer. I see an answer on the, on the web. Uh, oh, what does it say? Eva, uh, it looks like you're the winner. It, it well, it's you need to say what it is, but I'm guessing you're you're close enough. I think we're gonna give it to you. What do you guys think? I think so. Uh, hold on, what does it say? Eva says, okay. Got it. Boat works gears are displayed, used for hauling boats out of water. So oh. the, she got it right. You it's a right. Ship, it was a boat hauler, right? It's a ship hauling machine. Yeah. Um, and the final right. project, this was the final project of New Bern's 300 celebration uh, that was officially dedicated and turned over to the city by our dear friend, Susan, Ma Susan Mava Thomas of Swiss Bear when she's a director. Uh, she was a director for 30 years. And at the time, she pointed out that the city had no major public displays to reflect its rich boat building and shipping history. Um, it lay dormant for decades until it was discovered in 2007 by 300 volunteers, Tom McGraw and the late Dick Lore, Harry Goodman and Wade Tilly. In Susan's words, it's an absolutely magnificent piece of maritime machinery and a reminder of the outstanding historic role our city has had as a port and major boat building center. 
Like all of our projects, it has taken the public and private sectors to make them happen. Mm -hmm. That is what has made this community so very, very special. I can hear her saying that right now. So you can go down and see it in Lawson Creek Park. Yeah, and I remember that day um, when they did the dedication. It was it was really hot. <laughs> so all right. So if anyway. you have something that you want to tell us about, let us know if you'd like to be a guest or if you have any questions or suggestions by calling 252-259-6853 or send us an, in, an email, one of those, at info at newburnnow.com and Wendy will get you on. There you go. And, and one last comment here. Got it? I was making comment just to give hint. <laughs> Well, you ended up winning, Eva. She won it. Good job. <laughs> and I'll contact you because we need to drop off more prizes at uh, Carolina Creation. Creation. So, yes. Okay. All right. Well, join us again on August 5th, which is next Thursday from 1 to 2 p.m. as we Zoom live on Newburn Now Facebook page, newburnnow.com's Facebook page. The video and audio will be uploaded on newburnnow.com, YouTube, iTunes, and wherever you listen to your podcast. Yeah, right. and you can also listen to the show, did you say that, on Newburn Now, or Newburn's News Talk radio station, WNOS 103.9 FM, by tuning in Wednesday at 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. And do you guys have anything else? That's it. George, you just chilling out today? Just hanging, man. Yeah, no, just no, no court. Recovering from vacation. <laughs> yeah. I, today, I, had, I had court yesterday, but uh, and a couple next week. But um, today, just some appointments and, of course, the pod squad. The important <laughs> part. Well, we yeah. missed you, and I'm glad you're back. So um, I appreciate it, man. It's always fun. Always yeah. fun. All right. Well, that well is that is that a wrap? That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Say, All right. say it, George. All right, thanks for listening and have a great day, everybody. Woo! Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay, and okay.